Hey everyone, today's video is a makeup tutorial and it's on this look that I'm wearing today. It's very natural. You can wear it to basically anything. You can wear it to an interview, you can wear it to work, you can wear it to a kid's function at school, you can wear it on a date. It's not too dramatic, it's very easy and so if you want to see how I got this look then just keep watching. So here I am with absolutely no makeup. I actually had a request to do a full face of makeup, so I thought I would start with an easy look. So first I'm just priming my skin and I am using the Benefit Pore Fessional and I like to use that in areas where my pores look a little bit larger. So around my nose, on my chin. This is a great product and you can see the results immediately right when you put it on. It really fills in your pores. So I'm starting with that. And then I am going to go in with my Laura Mercier foundation primer. This is just the original version. I've been using this for years. And so I'm just kind of putting this in areas where I didn't put the benefit and maybe a little bit over it and just kind of pressing that into my skin. I feel like it really gives a good base for the foundation to stick to. And it helps my makeup last all day. And lately, I've been loving to mix two different foundations. That was the Urban Decay Naked in 4.5, and this is the Dior Skin Hydrating Makeup in 30. And I like to mix it on the palm of my hand versus the back, because when I put it on the back, I feel like it really soaks into my skin and I'm wasting product. So then I'm taking it about a pump to a pump and a half of each one and just putting it on the areas that I need it most. And then I'm going in with a damp beauty blender and just pressing it all over my face. I'm going over my eyes and into my hairline and just keep bouncing it around. Since the beauty blender was damp, this provides a light to medium coverage, which I'm fine with. For this look, you can still see some of my freckles come through. I do go over my eyes and just keep bouncing it. I do take it down my neck as well just so that everything is really blended and that there are no harsh lines. And I do think the key to great makeup is just blend, blend, blend as much as you can. Then I hate when there is foundation on my eyebrows so I just go in with the spoolie. I think this one is from e.l.f. And then I'm going in with the Giorgio Armani Corrector in number one, and I really just focus this on the areas that need it. So this isn't something I put all under my eyes, just in the areas where I need it. And so I'm going to use my pinkies here and really just press that into the areas where it needs that color correction. And for me, a lot of it is towards the center of my nose, like where my eyes are there, and I've got a little bit on the outside. And I really just try to press this in so it doesn't move around a lot, trying to cover any of those spots that I may have there. And then I'm taking the Laura Mercier Eye Basics in Wheat and using that as my eye primer. I like this because it's easy to blend. I use my ring finger most of the time. I think we were taught when we were little that that's the one that we use the least amount of pressure with. So it's great for doing something like this, for putting on eye cream. And I like this product because I have some discoloration on my lids. I've got some sunspots and this really helps to even out my eyelids. Then I'm taking Max Brulee eyeshadow on a Bobbi Brown big brush that I like to use when I take a color all the way from my lid up to my brow bone because I'm not using a highlighter with this look. So I also like doing this so that I can blend other eyeshadows easier. Then I'm going to take the Naked palette because I thought a lot of people may have this and I'm going in with the color Naked. And I am using a MAC pencil brush. I believe it's a 219. And I'm trying the technique that Nisha uses from Sugar Puff and Fluff. I think that's her channel name. I'll link it down below. She does amazing hooded eye tutorials. And as you can see, I have hooded eyes. Towards my nose, you can see my eyelid, but as it goes further out, my eyes droop down and then they're hooded on the outside. And actually the other eye, not that one, is more hooded. 
So my goal is to try to balance those out. So I am still just marking out where that transition color is going to go so that no other colors go beyond that. And that's the tip that I learned from Nisha. She does a much better job of this. And so that color is naked. And then what I'm going to do is grab my 217, and this is pretty clean. I had wiped it on a towel, and just start blending. Because the goal here is really to get rid of any of those harsh lines that the pencil brush may have left and really just blend. Now, I like to blend kind of out and up. I don't do the windshield wiper motions too much because I tend to go down too much and I really can't afford to have my eyeshadow going down because my eyes are already droopy enough. So I'm really just trying to blend it and go out and kind of up. And I am just continuing to blend that naked color with the MAC 217. And the next time I do one of these videos, I might edit some of this out just because there is a lot of blending here and I'm kind of running out of things to say. So I'm just continuing to blend, try to get rid of any of those harsh lines. And then I'm going to go in with a 224 and go into Buck and a little bit of Naked and really put this where my natural crease is, that darker color. So I am putting this where my real crease would be. And for this look, I am just using two different shades of brown in the crease. If you want to make it smokier or with more dimension, you could go in with a third colored brown and really work that in the outer V using a smaller crease brush. And sometimes with hooded lids, you have to pull your you know, pull gently on your eyebrow just to lift it up so you can get a smooth blend going there. And then I'm taking a 217 again and just blending the any harsh edges from that darker color that I just put down in my crease. And I've got a little towel there and I just kind of wipe it off. And again, I try to blend out and up. Then I'm using this color called Guava from the Laura Mercier Artist Palette. I love this color. It's kind of a peach, maybe light pink shade that I'm putting all over the lid. It has some sheen. I don't think it has true sparkles, but I can wear this on my lid. And it's actually showing up lighter than it really is, but it's a really pretty color. And it looks great on the lid. And so I'm just patting that. Instead of swiping, I'm just kind of patting and pressing it in on my lid. And then I'm going to go back in with the clean 217 and just kind of blend that with the other color that is there. So then I'm going in with the Maybelline Dream Lumi in buff. And I like to just put it on my ring finger and pat it in where I need it. That way I don't put too much on there. And so I'm just patting it underneath my eye. And same thing on the other side. And then what I like to do is go in with the Beauty Blender and just kind of blend it all together because that is much lighter than my skin. And then I go in with this like concealer flat brush and just use whatever concealers left on my hand and just kind of clear up any eyeshadow that may have fallen down or if there's any extra. I have a little spot there in the corner that I try to cover up just to make sure everything is up and kind of lifted and then go back over it with the Beauty Blender. And then I'm going in with my Laura Mercier Mineral Foundation in Classic Beige. And this just gives the skin a really nice glow, gives you a little extra coverage. And I'm using it with a Real Techniques, I think this is a blush brush, 
the Kabuki brush I used to use kind of died on me, so I'm testing this one out. I think I'd like one where the bristles were a little bit stiffer. If you have a favorite brush for the Laura Mercier Mineral Powder, let me know. I know a lot of people talk about the Sephora 55, but I don't think they have that one anymore. Then I'm going in with Buck on an, a little smudge brush just under my lash line. And I'm just kind of smudging that out. Sometimes I put down an eyeliner first and then like a brown one. I don't use black underneath and then just kind of smudge it. I'm using Buck and I think the other color was Dark Horse which has a little bit of shimmer to it. So I'm just taking that smudger brush and blending those two colors together. And make sure to blend under, under your eyes as well. Then I'm going in with Hula Bronzer on a MAC 109 just to kind of define my cheekbones a little bit and give myself some warmer color. Hula isn't too much darker than my own skin type, so I'm just using a little bit just to warm up the skin. And I like to put it around the hairline, down the chin. And then I'm going to go in with my Chanel Big Powder Brush and continue down the neck and just kind of blend out what I did with the 109 brush. and just blending again. Now I'm going in with the Smashbox. I think it's called the Brow Tech in brown. And I'm actually using the lighter shade of the two. And right now I overplucked one of my eyebrows. So not that one, the other one. So what I'm going to do is go back in, just brush the powder through and then I go back in to the eye on your left and just use the Anastasia Brow Wiz in soft brown just to try to make that one a little bit higher so that they match a little bit better. And I know eyebrows, they're never going to match perfectly, but that way I can kind of cheat and make it look like it's a little bit higher. And then I like to brush through it again with the spoolie and then I'm just using the brow gel. This is a clear brow gel by e.l.f. It's really cheap. I think it's a dollar. And I'm just setting my brows with that. And then I like to brush through them one more time just to make sure all the hairs are in place. Then I'm going in with the Chanel. And this is a waterproof eyeliner. It says Chanel waterproof long-lasting eyeliner in black, number 10. And I used to like the Revlon Color Stay, and I still do. I just thought I would try the Chanel, and I, I like it better, I have to say. I think you get what you pay for. The Revlon is great, and it lasts a really long time. This also lasts a really long time. And where I've really seen the difference between the two is in my waterline. Um, but right now I'm just putting it on my lid. I try to go really close to my lashes because I don't have a lot of lid space there. And I really just do it on the outer third. And then I always take a smudger brush and just kind of smudge it so the line is not harsh. I do it a little bit thicker on the outer edge just to make my eye look lifted. And I have to pull, not pull, but put my finger right there on my eyebrow to just get the skin to be smooth and that way I can really blend that eyeliner. Couldn't find my Laura Mercier. I have a little travel size blush brush. Um, so I just grabbed this one. This is a Bobbi Brown. I think it was from a travel set powder. It might be a powder brush and I'm using Tarte's exposed blush. Really pretty and just natural color on your cheeks. And then I'm going in with my Chanel eyelash curler, which isn't that great. It's like any other eyelash curler, um, but I had to buy it. And so I'm just curling my lashes. I like to usually heat it up with my hair dryer, but I didn't since I was doing everything right in front of this little mirror. Now I'm tight lining with the Chanel pencil. And this is what I was saying earlier is that I really can tell a difference because with the Revlon, it would sometimes come down onto my lower lash line. 
the water line and with this pencil it doesn't you can see the difference there between when you tight line and line that upper water line versus not doing it and I really just try to get close to the lashes now I'm going in with the covergirl clump crusher and I'm really using this as a primer just trying to coat each lash wiggling at the root of my lashes and then going up I find if you can wiggle 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 at the root and then just kind of pull it through you can really coat all the lashes I have a blog post on this too about combining this mascara with some other ones I'll link that below it was actually a subscriber that told me about this trick and I've been using it ever since and it works well with a lot of different types of mascaras and then I like to go through with a spoolie on my lashes just to make sure that there aren't any clumps and then I'm going to go back in later with the L'Oreal Voluminous but right now I am going to work on my lips and unfortunately I am out of frame this is the Makeup Forever lip liner in 3C this is my go-to lip liner if I can't think of what to use I usually just pull this one out it's really close to my natural lip color sorry about that I'm out again and this looks good with a lot of different types of lipstick so I'm just lining I'm not really over lining today just because it's a natural look and then I'm going to use NARS Niagara I love this color it's like a corally color looks great on a lot of different people and now I am going on to my lower lashes and once again I'm kind of out of the frame sorry about that and this clump crusher works great on my bottom lashes I never have to worry about it flaking or just transferring where you end up with those black raccoon eyes I never have that problem with this mascara and again I go in with the spoolie I have two separate ones one for my mascara one for my eyebrows but I just don't like clumps so I'm going in there and trying to just separate my lashes and then I'm going to go in with the L'Oreal Voluminous and just kind of coat all the lashes and this helps make them look a little bit thicker and so I really like combining the two mascaras and so we are almost finished here just doing that last bit of mascara taking the hair down and there we go that is the natural look that I think would look great on anyone and I'm just taking blending the color down my neck again just to make sure my neck and my face match and then I am using the Laura Mercier this is the universal powder on her puff just to put it on my chin I always kind of have a red chin and just kind of setting that so if you're still with me thank you so much for watching and um, if you have any questions feel free to leave those below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thanks and have a great day